What is up, hackers? Welcome back to another episode of Hack Crypto, where we hack all of our Web3 education. If you guys are brand new here and want to learn everything that is cutting edge Web3, slap a like on this video and be subscribed with the notification bell on. Now, in this episode, I'm going to be going over a project that is a little controversial. It's called WorldCoin. Now, the whole premise of WorldCoin is to basically have proof of personhood and that digital identity of you as a human go across the world, across the internet, using this new open source protocol. And the idea here is quite simple. If I'm a human, I'm interacting with other humans, and I can verify that I'm interacting with other humans, not a robot or an AI that is created. Now, as someone who has had hundreds of impersonators on Instagram and social media, scamming people, getting DMs on a regular basis, saying like, hey, you scammed me, what happened? Literally from scammers that were just copying and pasting my images, tagging me, family members, all sorts of friends and photos that I had posted and pretending to be me under full fake profiles and mass DMing people. This is a near and dear topic to me, which is digital identity and this proof of personhood is valid. First and foremost, I have no relationship with WorldCoin whatsoever. This is not a sponsored review. I don't hold any WorldCoin whatsoever. I just have been the victim of a lot of different impersonator attacks. And there's a lot of different pieces that go into this and four main ingredients that I'm going to talk about today. There's the world ID, which is that orb that a lot of people have been memeing and taking pictures of all over the internet, where you go and you scan your eyes and that proves that you are unique. That proves that you are a human and that's not your identity. It's not stealing your identity or anything like that. It's merely proving that you are a human. They have no interest in knowing who you are based on all the content that I've read about them. They're just merely trying to verify that you are a human. It's like a captcha for humans. So it's setting a foundation for that digital identity. So that is the world ID. It's these really funky, futuristic looking orbs that scan you. And then you get this digital ID card effectively that is on the application, which is the world app. That's the second ingredient that makes this possible. The world app acts as like a wallet. It's going to be utilizing the world token, which is the third ingredient. And that is going to allow you to transact and govern the protocol. Now, the idea here is that one human, one vote, you know, once you're scanned in, you have your unique digital identity that proves that you're a human, you can then govern and help govern the protocol. And I think that this is a really clever ingredient specifically where you have the app, you have the token, you have the world ID orb piece where you're getting that identification and verifying you are a human proof of personhood. And you're answering, answering some fundamental questions through this simple, unique scan that they're doing. Go through those three questions real quick. The who are you question, which is the digital identity ver verification that's done with the orb. And the challenges are that the lack of foundational layers opening doors for fraud when you have mass amounts of fraud and you have no ability when there's all these anons all over social media, they, there's no way to prevent that. Um, and there's no way to verify that that is a human. It could just be an AI pretending and fraudulently ripping people off all over the place. The next one is, are you who you say you are? This is the authentication piece. And this is the impersonation attacks. This is what is near and dear to me, where I've had hundreds of different impersonators go after on Instagram, specifically on Instagram, probably 50 or so on Twitter that send mass DMs, pretend to be me, but they get caught pretty quickly. Instagram's terrible. It's like the worst place where you're gonna get DMs from people that are impersonators. You have no idea how many of them are AI. Many of them are just click farms and things like that, trying to scam people out of 50 bucks here and there. But the digital authentication is the one that I have been very interested in and following very closely because that's disrupting a huge, huge ga gaping hole in the internet, which is the amount of impersonation attacks. And then are you human and unique? That's the proof of personhood. This is against uh, civil attacks. Civil attacks are a way that people can attack peer-to-peer -peer networks where they impersonate a bunch of different identities and they can attack it in different ways, whether that's governance, however you want to look at it. But civil attacks are a serious threat to blockchain and, and in general, any sort of peer-to-peer -peer network. And then intelligence, not a discriminator of humanness anymore. So if I'm sitting next to an AI and I'm sharing some information on the internet, or let's say this video, for example, and there's another AI that's sharing identical information, but theirs is more uh, you know, deep or something like that, and it's more analytical, the ultimate proof of personhood is 
the way that you watch each other as humans on the internet. Agnes Carlson actually said this really well on a Lex Friedman podcast not too long ago, where he's the best chess player in the world. I've been following him for many years, love chess and everything about the game. And ultimately what he said was AI has been around for a decade when it comes to chess, but nobody wants to sit and watch two AIs play each other. You wanna watch two humans play each other because we like seeing some discomfort. We like seeing challenges between other humans and that's just a human experience. So this, these three big pillars, the digital identity, identity verification, who you are is what that solves. The digital authentication is you are who you say you are, which is the impersonator piece. And then the proof of personhood, are you human? And this places you next to AIs because we're gonna, we're gonna have a world where there are AIs everywhere. There's more AIs than there are humans and they're hyper smart and it's just a reality of what's going to happen so this is laying the foundation for those three key answer those questions to be answered for us as humans on the internet in a digital age we need identification and verification one of the most recent examples of this uh, fraudulent activity that took place was there was i believe it was a senator and all of a sudden they were walking one day and they got a, a call from their son and the son was crying saying that he'd been kidnapped and he needed a ransom immediately or else they were going to you know do something that was escalated to him and immediately of course as a dad he sent money to whatever address the, the perceived son had sent him it was a full-blown ai generated voice they had called the son and completely mimicked his voice. They only need a couple seconds of your voice in order to mimic it. I'm assuming that my voice is going to be calling <laughs> thousands of people one day. Uh, hopefully not, you know, relatives that fall for this type of thing. But these attacks and the civil attacks that I talked before, I talked about before, are going to be hugely problematic for humans. And you know, the spread of disinformation is another example. A lot of this fraud is going to be snuffed out by projects like WorldCoin. I've been researching all over, trying to find ways personally that I, I could verify I am who I say I am and prevent fraudulent attacks that happen. Everyone I know that is a YouTuber and a creator that has, especially in the Web3 space, that has people impersonating them uh, is looking for a solution and there is none. Literally just getting banned on a regular basis is what what's going on and there's no solution. So there's a lot of negative people out there that are talking about WorldCoin. And initially I was one of them. I was like, okay, I'm not gonna go scan my pupils into this little orb and just, you know, give it over, pass pass that over to someone. But ultimately what this is doing through the world ID scan is it's proving that you're a human and it's not taking your identity. I think those are two very big different things that we don't want to conflate together is that it is just merely that verification of human personhood. And that is going to lay the foundation for your identity across the web, whether that's, you know, a mass amount of AI generated content that's being spread for misinformation. And we need to know who the humans are that are reporting on an issue. We need to know who, who the actual human beings are that are behind a piece of information that's being shared. We need to know who the, uh, you know, if a president is making an address to people, we need to know that it's actually that human that is making that address to those people. If there's a presidential candidate running, we need to verify that that clip that you're watching that has millions of views isn't just a deep fake that's an AI generated uh, piece of content floating around that's getting shared so there's social capital on it because people are falling for the trick of the AI. And this is gonna be widespread, massive, global, all over the world, across social media. AI and deep fakes are gonna be everywhere. I'm probably gonna have <laughs> hundreds, hundreds of me floating around with my voice and everything. But the benefit of this is, is that if you have an ID, you have a verification that you are able to prove that it is human, uh, it's a human making that statement and a human consuming it can verify that it's me. That is a, a way to really set the foundation for non-fraudulent activity. So privacy is probably the most misunderstood part about this. That was my misunderstanding. And a lot of people out there that just memed this and said like it's an overlord type thing, um, they didn't really understand it. So there's two different camps in the AI world. There is the decel or the deceleration camp or the doomers or what this is called. 
and then the effective acceleration camp or e slash acc you may have seen that this past week after the open ai craziness with sam uh, altman getting fired as the ceo of uh, open ai and just the craziness that happened there but there's two different camps there so those two camps are always sort of going at each other on social media and when you're thinking about this as digital identification and proof of personhood and your humanness online uh those two camps are they should be kind of bipartisan in knowing like okay we should verify that this is a human and this isn't a ai generated piece of misinformation from russia or something like that that i'm consuming right now and i think that there's just so much that we aren't prepared for with ai and one of the greatest examples <laughs> is the captchas chat gbt just beats every image based captcha out there many people don't even realize that yet where you know those buttons that you're supposed to press and the, you know you say okay this is how many motorcycles are in the image chat gbt can beat that in seconds it's it's not it's not going to prevent ai from bypassing these things so there are a lot of things on the world coin website you can check out if there's an orb near you you can be an orb uh, person or operator right now it looks like there's only six in the united states atlanta la new york and sf so some of the hubs there where you can go download the application get your id and then you can get access to the uh, wld token and that is currently trending i believe at 200 million dollar market cap so the, the jury's out on the token itself. I mean, there's 10 billion of the tokens, assuming that everybody on earth gets one of those tokens. And the idea here is that every human will have that world app and you are able to verify uh, through that application, your proof of personhood. Lastly, after we have the orb ingredient, we're for world ID, we have the token that kind of operates the governance of everything. We have the uh, application where people are going to interact with that. Uh, and ultimately, you know, this is going to be on chain. And I think that it's a powerful, powerful piece here during the rise of AI. Humanness during the rise of AI is just fundamental for us to really verify who's who. Lastly, I wanna talk about the traction here. Four million people have downloaded this. As of November 1st, 2023, four million human beings have downloaded the mobile application. And I believe 2 million have gone through the actual scan itself, uh, over 2 million. And on their website that I'll link below, you guys can see the, the ticker. You can literally see unique humans joining uh, every couple seconds. There's a new human jumping on. And I'm excited about this. A lot of people aren't. A lot of people think that this is like the demise of humanity, but it falls into the doomer camp, basically. The people that are willing to like sit there and say like, oh, my my privacy, I'm not going to do any research on the actual privacy piece here where they're just verifying I'm human, but uh, they don't have problems with CAPTCHA <laughs> or anything like that. But this is effectively the CAPTCHA of the real world and to combat AI. So think about those two camps, which one you fit into, the effective acceleration or the deceleration doomers. And it's a lot of complexity going on here, but ultimately this is going to be the, uh, the, the ultimate way of verifying your human. It is uh, accessible via smartphone. So everybody in the world almost has a, a smartphone and the orb is an iris biometric verification with extreme accuracy. So I don't know if there's any AI robots walking around that have an iris yet. I don't think so. <laughs> Probably got hundred years, 50 years before that happens. So ultimately I'm really excited about this. I'm excited to get near an orb one day where I can verify. Maybe I'll do it next time I'm in LA or SF. And just to show you guys what it's like, if you think that this is a crazy project, slap a like on this video, comment something about it, what you think about this video. And I'm really eager to see how this decentralization of the identity works. And other projects like Civic in the past have tried something like this, but nowhere near this level of complexity. Sam Altman's involved in this. I think he's an investor or an advisor. And it's important for us to keep our humanness online. And I'm a fan. If you're not, that's cool too. You can jump into the decel, uh, deceleration doomer camp, but the acceleration piece is going to cause discomfort. And that's just a reality in the midst of something transformational like this with AI, it's going to be uncomfortable for many, many people. And if you want to keep your humanness in a digital way, this seems to be the best and most effective way to do that um, in combating all the fraud that's just insane right now. And it's only going to get worse as scammers uh, start figuring out that they can do these uh, kind of crazy attacks uh, at scale for less, less and less money 
uh, over the next 10 years. So that's it for this video. I want everybody to be excited about projects like this where they're pushing the limit and they are uncomfortable. People are gonna conspiracy theory all about the orbs all day, which is fine. They're gonna, they're gonna find something to theorize about anyways. But as someone who's gone through these attacks personally, uh, I couldn't be more stoked to have this type of thing out there to verify uh, your, your personal humanness, your, your proof of person. So that is it for this episode. Slap a like if you like it, and I will see you here in the next episode of Hack Crypto.